This video is sponsored by Fabulous, the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. Hey, what's up? In my opinion, a great cheesesteak is literally just cheese, steak, onions, and bread. So how you combine those four things actually matters a lot. Today, I'm gonna to show you two ways. The first is a more working man's version that's a lot easier to make, but super craveable. And the second is a fancier chef boy version that's a little bit more maxed out and fully from scratch. To get started, I'm gonna grab one large white onion and give it a medium dice. I'm using white onion here over yellow because I found that yellow Vidalia style onions were just too candy sweet and tipped the balance in the sandwich too far away from savory. One large onion is gonna be plenty for four large cheesesteaks. Now to cook this, I'm gonna grab my 10 inch cast iron pan and preheat it over medium high heat. Any old 10 incher will work here, but since I'm gonna be cooking my steaks in cast iron later on, I'd figure I'd only get one pan dirty. Once this pan is preheated, I will hit it with a little bit of neutral oil, then in goes my diced onions and then a strong pinch of salt. I'll stir those to combine until the salt and oil are evenly distributed. Then I'm gonna turn this heat down to low and cook this for about 15 minutes or so or until everything is tender and the onions are starting to take on some color. While those cook down, I'm gonna grab my beef for this easier version of the sandwich. Conveniently, my grocery store sells this stuff called beef shaved steak and I've got two pounds or one kilo of it here ready to go. When they say beef shaved steak, it's actually unclear as to what steak they're referring. I'm guessing it's not anything expensive like strip or ribeye, but it's probably like chuck or flat meat. Either way, it looks fatty enough to make a good cheesesteak and it's shaved very thin, which I prefer. If you don't have access to a shaved beef product like this, don't fear. Part two of this video will give you a few more options. To get this stuff ready for the pan, I'm gonna run my knife through it one more time to turn these slices into something that kind of resembles a strip. Smaller pieces are gonna give us a more tender, looser texture in the final sandwich and help prevent steak from getting dragged out by my teeth during a hefty bite. I really hate that. Once this beef's all chopped up, I'm gonna portion it into four 225 gram or roughly eight ounce portions, give or take. Once this beef is all portioned up, I'm gonna check back on my onions. It's been about 15 minutes and as you can see, these are just starting to take on some color and have gotten fully tender. I'll mention now that a lot of people would add green or hot peppers in with their onions and if that's what you like, I say go for it. I'm not here to stop you. I'll just say that that's not my truth when it comes to cheesesteaks. I keep it purely beef, cheese, bread, and onions. For now, I'll scoot these onions out of the way into a deli container and then preheat my oven to 375F or 190C. From here, the cheesesteaks are gonna come together pretty quickly, so we need to make sure that we have everything at the ready. For this first version, I've got a thinly sliced provolone cheese here at the ready, a Philadelphia classic. I've got some decellophane slices of white American cheese as well. I will not be shamed, so don't try. I've got four eight ounce portions of beef and then four generic store-bought hoagie rolls. These store-bought hoagies are sweeter than I would make them and they aren't super flavorful, but they do make for an excellent quick cheesesteak, I must admit, so try and find something that looks like these do. Oh, and don't forget about your onions. Those are at the ready as well. Now, I'm gonna grab a paper towel and then turn my cast iron up to high heat and then give it a thorough wipe out to get any oniony stuff out of there. Once that pan is good and cleaned up and preheated, I'm gonna give it a long squiz of neutral high smoke point oil, then in goes one portion of my beef. You could definitely cook all four of these at once in a 10 inch cast iron, but a man can only eat so many cheesesteaks, you guys so I'm just making one. As you can see, I've used my spatula to get this beef pressed down into the rough shape of a large hamburger patty, and then I hit it with a generous pinch of salt and then a bunch of coarsely ground black pepper, like a lot of pepper. Now I'm gonna sear this beef on the first side for about 90 seconds in total or until the bottom has gotten a good crusty sear like this. Using my spatula, I'm gonna flip the beef over to get some different beef touching the pan, and then I'm gonna turn the heat all the way down to low. From there, I'll toss one of my hoagies into my hot oven and get that toasted up while I finish everything else. And then in goes a few spoonfuls of onions. I'll say two tablespoons is what I like, but more isn't bad by any means. And from there, I'm gonna gently cook this beef on low heat, stirring constantly. We're doing the second half of this process over low heat to avoid drying out the beef. When beef is shaped thin, it can get pretty leathery pretty fast. So I'm gently cooking this for 30 to 40 more seconds or so, or until there is barely any pink left. Once we're there, I'm gonna add in two slices of good old white American cheese product right on top. Using my spatula, I'm gonna break that up and give everything a nice toss toss to get the cheese mixed in so it can start to get gooey. After about 15 seconds, the cheese and the meat are now fully bonded together forever into the thing that we call cheesesteak. To build this sandwich, I'm gonna grab my hot hoagie out of the oven and then immediately put down two thin slices of provolone cheese. Next, while this meat and cheese is still very hot, I'm gonna layer that right on top of the provolone so that it can start to get melted. 
And notice that this meat and cheese looks very juicy still. That's thanks to cooking the beef so gently during the second half. To finish this little baby, I'm gonna wrap it up very tightly with a long piece of parchment paper. Parchment is useful because it does a lot more than just contain the sandwich. It actually unifies everything inside by mushing it together, and it brings some much needed structural integrity to an otherwise very sloppy sandwich. When I cut into it, you can see that the beef, cheese, and onions have all become one thing, and they look super juicy and savory and beefy. What I love about this style of cheesesteak is that it requires almost no prep and can be made by literally anybody. My dad comes to mind because he basically doesn't cook but loves bombing his guts with various types of meat and cheese. He drove a hundred miles to go to a Portillo's to get cheese fries and an Italian beef combo sandwich. What an absolute hero. So to make a version of the sandwich that I think has more flavor, we need to dial up the quality of the beef. For that, I've got two options. The one on the right here is two pounds of 40 day aged hand cut sirloin steak. I got this stuff from my butcher friend, Chris Balliard. He is the owner of Balliard's Meat and Provisions here in St. Louis. They do whole animal butchery there and their product is really special and of the highest quality. I'll throw a link in the description to this shop because if you live in the St. Louis area, you definitely need to check it out. When I originally asked Chris about ribeye, he actually insisted that based on what he had in the shop that day sirloin was actually the way to go for a really great philly cheesesteak and i'll let him explain why i love sirloins they're delicious they're super tender and this one in particular has got 40 days of dry on it so it's pretty special and it's going to be i think it's going to have more flavor than a ribeye at this point because of the amount of age that's on it as you can see, Chris hand cut this stuff because he's a total bad boy, but certainly you could ask your butcher to throw it on their meat slicer if you're not confident that they can do it by hand. On the left, I got some ribeye here that I actually sliced myself here in the house. But wait, how did I do that? Well, I bought the cheapest slicer that they had on Amazon. It's called the Chef Man, and it's quite plasticky and the long-term durability remains to be seen, but for slicing a few pounds of meat at a time at home, it should work great. Warren isn't sold though that it's super safe. I know, that's why I'm putting these babies on. To slice these, I'm gonna grab two pounds of ribeyes that I had chilling in the freezer for about 10 minutes. Keeping them cold firms them up a little bit so that they go a little bit easier on the motor of the chef man. I slice my ribeyes parallel to the way that the steaks were cut, so I'm going against the grain. That is the chef-y proper way to slice stuff, but if it seemed easier, you could slice them crosswise like this. That's technically with the grain, but since this stuff is being sliced so thin, it doesn't really matter which way the grain is. All in all, the chef man did a pretty good job. It does kind of feel like a cheap piece of shit, though, and it definitely won't last forever, but if you do a little bit of slicing at home for like Italian beef or pastrami's, it actually might be worth the 75 bucks. I'm definitely stoked to have it. And also mention that all meat slicers, regardless of price point and quality, are a total bummer to clean, so be prepared for that. Now, just like the shaved beef product from the first cheesesteak, I am going to run my knife through this ribeye every inch or so to make sure that it's a little bit more broken down for the sandwich. And there we go. I'm going to throw these beefs back in the fridge to keep them chilling while I quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Fabulous. Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits thanks to science-backed daily routines. The way it works is you download the app, take a short quiz about what types of habits you want to form, what your goals are, and what changes you want to see, then the app provides all the tools you need to meet those goals. Some of the ones that I've been working on have been shutting down screens after 7 p.m., tracking my morning meditations, and taking part in a no sugar challenge over the weekend. There's also a feature called Journeys, which is a little bit more of a long-form habit formation situation. That's where you build complementary habits all at once, like overall how to eat healthier, or how to start and keep an exercise habit. There's also a huge focus on coaching inside of the app if you want on it. One of the reasons I chose Fabulous over other apps is that you can make it really personal. I think for me, being self-guided works a little bit better, but if you need all that coaching, you can get as much as you want. I also really like the heavy emphasis on behavioral science. For me, that makes building habits a lot more manageable. So to start building a better daily routine, the first 100 people who click the link in my description will get 25% off their Fabulous subscription. Link in the description, give it a try, 25% off. Thank you, Fabulous. Now, if we got to this point in the video and you thought that I was not gonna pay tribute to Cheese Whiz, think again. One less bit of prep before making the Sammies is to make a from scratch, gooey, sharp cheddar cheese sauce. 
The first step towards that is to grate eight ounces or 220 grams of sharp cheddar. This cheese was labeled extra sharp in the store. That means it has a very low moisture content and we need to get a little bit creative on the sauce to keep it from getting grainy. Once that's grated, I'll load it into a 10 inch pan. This is nonstick, but regular stainless would definitely work. Behind that 10 grams of cornstarch, then I'll give the shredded cheese a toss to get it well coated. I'm using cornstarch here instead of a roux because it's a lot easier and higher strength. It's kind of like my Insta roux. Next thing is 240 grams of evaporated milk. Regular milk won't work here because it doesn't have enough protein to achieve an unbroken sauce. Once everything is combined, I'm gonna move it over to the stove and melt it together over very gentle heat. The canned cheese product that you see on most cheese steaks is full of additional emulsifiers and salts to stay fully liquid at a variety of temperatures, and I'm fine with that. The thing that bums me out about it is that it does not really taste like cheese. Making our own cheese sauce gives us that gooey, gloppy texture that we want, but we actually get some real cheddar flavor with some age on it in there. After four to five minutes of stirring this pretty frequently over low heat, this should have coalesced into a molten golden sauce like this. If yours is a little bit grainy here, don't sweat it. There should be some more evaporated milk in that can and add that. That brings some extra protein and water that makes that fat easier to emulsify. Once that's stirred in, that's it. In five minutes, you've basically made a perfect unbreakable cheese sauce that is going to be great slopped on all kinds of things like cheese fries or nachos. And if you're feeling like an absolute freaking psycho, add in some pepper jack and some chopped jalapenos and see how you like that. Thanks to culinary bad boy Kenji Lopez Alt for the recipe here. And as always, I will link to his article on cheese sauce in the description. Now, once I've got this cheese covered, I'm going to set it aside for a few minutes while I get everything sorted for my sandwich. Quick inventory here. I've got two portions of sirloin, two portions of ribeye. I'm going to cook both to see which one I like more. I've got the onions, same as before, and I've got a couple of my homemade sesame hoagies. The best looking cheesesteaks on the internet that I've seen use an Italian style sesame hoagie roll. And so I took my hoagie roll formula and rolled it in sesame seeds. The full process and recipe will be below in the description, along with a link to my Italian beef video where I go fully in depth on how to make proper perfect hoagies at home. To make these steaks, I'm gonna preheat my 10 inch cast iron pan once again over high heat. Once that's hot, in goes a long squeezer of neutral oil and then in goes my sirloin. I'll use my spatula now to press this into a large burger patty shape that's kind of flat, then I'll give it some aggressive salt and pepper. I'll sear this for about 90 seconds or so to develop some good crust on the first side. And right away, I noticed that this beef has a pretty low water content from all that dry aging. That should theoretically lead to beef with more flavor, but we'll see. Once I've got a good crusty sear on the first side, I'll come back and add about two tablespoons or 20 grams of onion, and then the heat goes to low. I'll spread the meat out in the pan and cook this on low very gently until this beef has just about lost all of its pinkness. That should take about 60 seconds or so. While that beef finishes cooking, I'll mention that I'm slowly reheating my cheese sauce on the other burner, and I dropped a sesame hoagie into the oven to warm up. My cheese sauce got a little bit cold because I was filming. That's no big deal. I added a little bit more evaporated milk as I brought it up, and in no time, it'll be back to a yellow, saucy goop. Back at the beef, things are looking great. It's been cooking over low heat for about 60 seconds or so. I'll give it a quick taste to see how I did on seasoning, and that tastes great. I'll snatch out my hoagie from the oven, and now let's build a sandwich. The first move here is to lay down a generous amount of cheese sauce right onto that sesame hoagie. Don't be shy. I'm certainly not. Then down goes my sirloin onion mixture. And I'll mention that eight ounces or 225 grams of meat here will just about fill a eight inch hoagie to the max. This thing is very full. To finish, I'll hit it with another long drizz of sharp cheddar cheese sauce. And just like before, I'm gonna grab a long parchment paper and wrap this thing up like the present that it is. These sloppy sammies without parchment paper are a total bummer to eat and they generally just fall apart. And there we go, sirloin cheese steak. Right off the bat, this sandwich looks a lot steakier than the first one, but it looks just as gooey, just in a lot more of a yellow way. The sesame roll here is just a little bit crisp on the edges, and the inside is all soft and steamy from the moisture of that cheese and hot steak. Before I give you my thoughts on this sirloin version, though, I'm going to cook some sliced ribeye in the exact same way. That's a hot pan for 90 seconds. I'll add in the onions and then finish on low heat for 60. Once it's looking all good and rendered like this, I'm going to move it to a roll and then top it with a bunch of hot yellow. When I cut into it, you can see this ribeye version definitely looks like a traditional steak sandwich. I generally like things a little bit more shaved than that when it comes to cheesesteak, but let's see how they stack up. This is the sirloin and this is the ribeye, and I'm going to taste them both and let you know what I think. Whoa. Mm -hmm. mm. I thought 
the sirloin was beefier overall and had a lot more flavor, but the ribeye was definitely really fatty and succulent in a pleasant way, but it wasn't that beefy. So for my money, I'm gonna go with the butcher shop hand cut sirloin for now, but all three of these cheesesteaks that I made in this video are quite sick. If you, like me, don't have access to a good one in your area, I really hope you give any one of these three Sammies a try soon. I apologize in advance to your bowels. Let's eat this thing.